Hello! Today's episode is coming to you from my basement again. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the question why and how it can be used to help you get past roadblocks um, that you may be running into within your narrative development as well as in your overall design. Um, I'm also going to be talking about uh, updates for Electric Flow as well as giving a quick reminder about the upcoming Game Developer Expo. Hope you enjoy! <laughs> So for today's episode, I wanted to take you through an activity that I take my students through in my Storytelling for Games class. So many of you may be familiar with this, so complete works of Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, I'm going to be sharing a story from this. Um, and I'm actually not going to take it from this particular book. There's a lot of variations uh, as people have put it in new books and updates. And there's one in particular that I found that I really like the way they use the language. And so I'm going to share that one. So just I'm going to read the story and I want you to just listen to it. And then afterwards I'm going to ask you some questions. Alright, in this one it's titled The Real Princess. You may have also seen the title Princess and the Pea, or The Princess on the Pea, or there's a couple other variations, but here we go. Here was once a prince who wanted to marry a princess, but she must be a real princess, mind you. So he traveled all around the world seeking such a one. But everywhere something was in the way. Not that there was any lack of princesses, but he could not seem to make out whether they were real princesses. There was always something not quite satisfactory. Therefore, home he came again, quite out of spirits, for he wished so much to marry a real princess. One evening, a terrible storm came on. It thundered and lightened, and the rain poured down. Indeed, it was quite fearful. In the midst of it, there came a knock at the town gate, and the old king went out to open it. It was a princess who stood outside, but oh dear. What a state she was in from the rain and bad weather. The water dropped from her hair and clothes. It ran in at the tips of her shoes and out at the heels. Yet, she insisted, she was a real princess. Very well, thought the old queen. That we shall presently see. She said nothing, but went into the bedchamber and took off all the bedding, then laid a pea on the sacking of the bedstead. Having done this, she took twenty mattresses and laid them upon the pea and placed twenty eider down beds on top of the mattresses. The princess lay upon this bed all the night. In the morning she was asked how she had slept. Oh, most miserably, she said. I scarcely closed my eyes the whole night through. I cannot think what there could have been in the bed. I lay upon something so hard that I am quite black and blue all over. It is dreadful. It was now quite evident that she was a real princess, since through twenty mattresses and twenty eiderdown beds, she had felt the pea. None but a real princess could have such delicate feeling. So the prince took her for his wife, for he knew that in her he had found a true princess, and the pea was preserved in the cabinet of curiosities, where it is still to be seen, unless someone has stolen it. And this, mind you, is a real story. Okay. So what I generally do with my students is after I read them that story, I ask them to start asking the question, why? When they jump into this process, it helps them generate ideas. Why was the princess out there in a thunderstorm? With her being as weak as she was, how could she have survived that kind of a rainstorm? What kind of a kingdom was this? Why was the king the one going out and answering the, the, the knocking on the gate? And the questions go on and on. And the idea is that if you can ask questions and come up with good solutions, reasonable solutions, things that help to progress the story, help explain situations, you're able to expand and move past places where you may get stuck. Now, I use this a lot within my own narrative, uh, as well as within game design in general. I like to take a step back from the work that I'm doing and start asking the why questions. Why is this character doing this? Why is the situation the way it is? What are the goals that need to come out of it? And how do I plan on getting there? And you just start asking questions, more and more and more questions. And then you take the time after you've asked the questions and written them down to step back from the process a little bit and start answering them. And you can use those answers to help flesh out areas that you may have felt stuck before, that you may have felt um, kind of log jammed or felt blocked at all. Uh, it can also help you through design issues. Why are the control schematics this way? Why is this art being portrayed this way? What is this telling me about the characters or about the story? 
Um, how does this relate to my audience? By asking those questions and, and honestly asking them and coming up with solutions um, as to reasons why justifications, either so that you can better understand it or better yet when you stop the justifying and you just ask the questions honestly and try and find better solutions, you can actually make a lot of progress in your own development. So I just want to bring that up for today. Uh, as for electric flow, making a lot of great progress. We've got most of the new dialog system implemented. We're just trying to get the last of the uh, warning system implemented. And I'm currently working on the, the character emojis. That's what we're calling them, for lack of a better word. Um, but the different expressions that the character is going to be showing as the dialog continues. Um, once we get more of that in place, we're going to put all that together. And then we'll continue on with the next character and more of the levels. So uh, hopefully we'll have an update here soon once we get this warning system in place. Also upcoming still in two and a half weeks is the Big Game Developer Expo here in Columbus. Once again, this is the fifth year of the Game Developer Expo. We have some amazing speakers and wonderful talent. So if you're able to make it to the Columbus area, Columbus, Ohio, uh, please check it out. So if you want to see more information, go to the website. That's thegdex.com. So www.thegdex.com. Um, and then I will end this video with a story that my oldest daughter wrote that I'm really proud of, so I figured I'd throw it on here since I'm talking about story and narrative anyway. Um, this book is The Aven Adventures of Super Slash Claw and Cutie Claw by Aline Bodden. Once there was a girl, not just a girl, but really she was shy and super smart. She only had one friend. One day, on a field trip to the animal shelter, the girl and her friend were giving kittens baths and then fell into the bath liquid. Ah! Splash! They were okay, but they were different somehow. They were superheroes! Just then, a monster came, and they beat it with their powers. They beat lots of bad guys and soon were the protectors of the city. They were unbeatable. The end.